Hello, and welcome to Small Business Snippets, the podcast from smallbusiness.co.uk. I'm your host, Anna Jordan. Today, we have Candice Brown, pub owner, chef, media personality, and winner of the Great British Bake Off in 2016. After winning the show, she gave up her job as a secondary school special needs teacher to pursue baking full time. She's released two cookbooks, Comfort and Happy Cooking, and runs the Green Man Pub in Eversholt with her brother, Ben. The pub took a hard hit over the pandemic, with only £416 in their business bank account and Candice in the kitchen making meals for delivery single-handedly. The business is recovering and she's teamed up with Zero to demystify making tax digital. We're going to be talking about running a business with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and how to get involved in causes you care about. Hi Candice. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing really well, thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Busy, busy and all over the place, but really, really well. So there is the sort of two pronged approach to your day to day. So there's the pub owner and there's kind of the media personality side of things as well. How do the two work together normally? Oh, it's funny when you sort of, even when people sort of say about like media personality and fame and things like that, I'm a bit like, well, it makes me feel funny because it's, I don't know I don't class myself as that it's always something that I've just this is just something I've I've done I've been able to turn a a hobby into a job which is just incredible and obviously going on the show when it was at its at its biggest it was the last one on the BBC it was the big change over to channel four so it, it got huge amounts of sort of views so obviously the media interest was there but I didn't know what to expect I never knew what was going on I didn't know what to expect I didn't assume anything and I didn't expect anything either So everything has just been an incredible surprise and I've kind of taken opportunities and give them my all and run with them and really try to, to, yeah, to do things that I can fully get behind, feel completely passionate about. And the pub is one of those. I always wanted something and I suppose in a way, Bake Off slowed that down, but then sped it up when it came along and it was never going to be a pub, which is, is interesting but we just saw the place and fell in love with it. And also I wasn't silly enough and I'm not silly enough to think that the media things and everything like that would last forever. And I knew I needed a business to, to fall back on and to have something running alongside and to build and to really kind of develop. And, and that's where the pub came in. So the two definitely overlap. It's a funny overlap. I definitely see myself as a, a landlady and weirdly a business owner now, which is something I never thought I would do. But kind of all the other stuff allows me to, to, to build this business, which is just an incredible place to be, an incredible situation to be in. What kind of role do you play in the day to day on the pub side of things? Um, I'm laughing because I do a bit of everything. I literally do everything. And that might be from cleaning. If the cleaners don't turn up, it might be serving, waiting tables behind the bar, helping out in the kitchen. I bake. So we have cakes of the day and the puddings and things obviously fully involved in recipe and menu development and things like that along with the the head chef and the kitchen team who are just incredible and I pretty much do everything and anything I wouldn't do anything that I wouldn't expect anybody else to do so I live above the pub as well so obviously I'm here when I'm here I'm here all the time so yeah so say I'm pretty hands-on I'm hands feet head on everything I'm fully fully in That's the best approach to take as a business owner. But I also understand that in January 2020, you were diagnosed with ADHD. Forbes has described this as a superpower for an entrepreneur. How do you feel about the statement as a business owner? Oh, I don't know, really. I've kind of always exceeded and excelled. I say excelled is the right word in in physical sort of subjects at school. And I think having taught special needs and sort of understanding a little bit, I kind of probably knew I probably had something along the lines of ADHD, but it's diagnosed so late on in women and it's it's diagnosed so differently in girls as well. It shows itself so differently as we're all individuals. So it presents itself so differently. Um, And as I kind of knew sort of working in schools, you get sort of children who are kind of almost the grey. So they're not misbehaving. They're not falling below they're not excelling, they're not exceeding expectations, they're just coasting along the middle, and they're doing fine, so they're causing no real problems, um, and they're just doing okay, and that's what I was, and that's 
what I did. I loved PE, I loved food technology, woodwork, I think, what do we call it, woodwork, drama, everything like that, I was top. Things like maths, just completely struggled. History, just could not remember a thing. I mean, I, I don't think I even got a registered mark on my history GCSE because I couldn't remember. And that's and it's things like that. I'd go into school wearing odd shoes at the age of 16. I was late every day. Mum used to leave me at home and take my brother in because I'd make my brother late. But all of these things, it's just like it's just Candice. And she's a bumblebee and it's carried on through life. People tell me to meet them an hour earlier than I should be because I'm late all the time. And um, yeah, I started seeing a psychiatrist. I've been quite open about my, my mental health and um it was one of the things he said, I, I would like to address this. And I said, address what? And he said, I want to run a few tests. And yeah, it wasn't what I was there to talk about, but it kind of made sense. So it had, and it did enable me to do Bake Off. Give me a week to do something and I will take that week and probably take two weeks and probably still do it in the last hour of that two weeks, even though it was due a week ago. So people were saying, how did you do Bake Off? And I said, because I had three and a half hours to get this done if I didn't get it done, I was going to look really stupid. So I had to get it done. There was no choice. And that's how I did it. I would thrive under pressure. And it's the only time I can get stuff done within a time limit. I mean, you ask my brother, I drive him mad, absolutely mad, because he's like, do things, do it now, get it done. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go, have you done that? And I'm like, um, I was just doing it. And then I wander off and go and do something else. But it has enabled me to to do the things that I have done. It's enabled me to proceed, to progress and, and to learn, but in quite a different way and kind of adapting. And I'm, I'm still learning about ADHD. I'm still learning about myself, which is, is, is really interesting for the teacher side of me as well. But I think as a superpower, yeah, it, it, I suppose it is for some people. And I suppose, yeah, it enabled me to do Bake Off, which actually, I don't know, had I been kind of less thinking about it or thought about it too much maybe I wouldn't have done it but the fact was like right you know what I've got to get this done I've got no choice get it done and do it I over planned I wanted to do more everything they I did was they didn't think I was going to get done in the time limit but that's how I do things now as well I try and squeeze as much as I can into the day sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but it can also be quite stressful but yeah it's about learning and managing that but I think it's an interesting thing, an entrepreneurial superpower. I mean, I'm quite happy to have that tagline. I might get myself a little cape or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, it works. Me and my brother work well together. He's very kind of straight down the line. Ben's very, very kind of, he knows numbers. He's a builder. He knows figures and things like that. Whereas I go, I don't, I can't, Ben. I don't understand. I don't need to know. But it's about having that trust and also having people around like accountants and things like that, that we do trust because that's where I fall short. So I use my superpowers and my strengths to push on, but also I recognise my weaknesses and I, I use people I can trust for those weaknesses and learn. Absolutely. Of course, I mean, that kind of brings us nicely into one of the areas where it sounds like you do struggle a bit, which is the bookkeeping side of things. And of course, with all the problems we've had over the past couple of years, there's been the looming I don't want to say threat, but the, the looming spectre of the rollout of making tax digital as well. Yeah, I mean, I will be the first person to say that terrified me straight away because I just thought, I what am I, like, how am I going to do this? I don't have real interest in using IT and computers. Then the thought of putting tax and numbers along with IT and computers was just very, very daunting. And I know it is for a lot of people. But it's so crucial for small businesses today. It's so, so crucial. And it's going to become a law. So we have to do it. There are no ifs and buts about it. We have to be able to do it. So making it as simple as possible and having a team around us that we trust and know what they're doing that you can fall back on is just, it's so, so important because it is daunting. But as small businesses, we're going to have to do it. There's no ifs and buts about it. It's one of those things. It's got to be done. Same as I approach everything, right? It's got to be done. But how can I do this in the easiest and best way for me and for my business? So if you don't have the people or the resources, is there anything else you can rely on to help deal with those bookkeeping tasks? If you haven't got that around you, then obviously packages like Zero are offering a really simple easy way to do it and when I went on and had a look at what they were doing my first thought was oh I could do that and that's a real benchmark for me 
if I can do it, then you can do it, especially when it comes to numbers and maths and things I don't really have an interest in. So I'm going to lose my attention. I'm probably going to lose my thought process. So actually, simple, effective programs and, and apps like Zero are going to be so beneficial to people. They really, really are because it's making something quite daunting, really, really simple and pretty easy and less daunting because it has to be done. And you've got involved in a lot of the struggles that pubs and other hospitality businesses have, have experienced. So everything from reducing beer duty, tackling food waste, tackling no shows. You've got involved in quite a lot of causes. So for a small business owner who is cash strapped and potentially time strapped, how can they get involved in activism and causes? I think um, this is a funny one because when he said about activism, I was like, oh gosh, is that like full on like placards and demonstrating and stuff like that? I, I, I do. I do. I follow a lot of charities. I'm one of these people that feels like I'm never doing enough. And if we are struggling, then there's going to be other people struggling and other people who are struggling more and in different ways. I do lots of bits of pieces for charities. I work with different charities, whether it's Dogs on the Streets, Alzheimer's Research, Copperfield, and... I, I, I kind of try and I try and do my bit but then obviously there's ones that hit closer to home like campaigning for the reduction in beer tax because that affected me directly and I know it's affecting my my peers and my colleagues directly who have pubs or are in hospitality so to be to be asked to help or to ask to have a voice about that and, and use my platform is is incredible and, and and really really important again daunting but also sort of using using my knowledge and a lot of the time I the things I do and what I do is either it either affects me or it's something I completely and utterly passionately believe in, which means I can give it my all. It means I can get behind it. And obviously it's, it's the same thing as working alongside zero. The tax going digital is happening. And if I am struggling and I'm worried about that change, then I know other people will be as well. So it's so important because obviously it's making smaller businesses aware of the legislation and and using those benefits for technology using the benefits that technology can bring because actually we use it so much those other campaigns and things I do do whether it's working with animal shelters whether it's working with Alzheimer's research whether it's a trek I'm doing people have found those out through technology and social media so if you're able to do those things and able to share knowledge about things like tax going digital, then that's a good thing because it does all kind of work through. Tax goes up on beer, your taxes go up, you need to, you need to go to your accountant, it's it, everything. And that's what I find weird and funny, how everything almost comes together in a really weird, mush up, weird circle. And it's just about picking those bits apart, using your strengths picking the brains of other people's strengths and and learning and and having people that you can trust but I think if you believe in something I think it's so important to have a voice as long as you're not harming anybody else as long as you're not being mean or unkind I think that's where it's just so important to do what you believe in and and share share your passion because you learn from that but you also can help other people learn as well and things do happen that you that aren't right things do happen that will be of detriment to you and I think you need to ensure that if 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 you believe something is right or if something is wrong you go about it in the right way to to try and make a difference because we are here we are trying to do what we're doing and we're trying to I don't know survive in quite a difficult time and I think if we can make things easy for ourselves or speak up for people that maybe don't have a voice or causes or activism then I think it's it, it can only be a good thing and sharing through technology is probably the biggest way that that's going to happen now. Absolutely and sharing your voice and using technology have been central to a very quickly changing landscape over the past couple of years. What kind of advice would you give to other hospitality owners about adapting to a new normal? Oh new normal it's a funny oh, one isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's a funny one. People say normal. I'm like, there is, do you know what? There is no normal. And it's, and that's, that's through everything. That's through what is normal. Like when I think, oh God, I'm not normal. Or is that because I've got ADHD? Is that because I'm just different to the next person? Of course, it's, we're all different. And actually being perfectly imperfect is a great thing, but that's across the board. And I think that's what the pandemic has maybe shown us as well. And probably even more is that we are all different and actually 
what we thought was normal was never really normal and now it's completely upside down back to front diagonal and wiggly all over the place and we have had to adapt to that and I think <sighs> hospitality were probably affected some of the worst but I think it showed as well the resilience of the hospitality sector um, that people did come together and people did do what right we can't be open let's do takeaways we can't talk to customers let's get online schools can't provide free school meals let's do that and it and it was very very powerful and I think using that is is just incredible I think we we're still trying to recoup what we've what we lost and I think a lot of businesses will be doing that as well and I feel that every day we're so short-staffed it's untrue hence the cleaning hence having to to work in the pub hence having to do all those different bits and pieces I'm not saying that I wouldn't anyway because I am here but it shows there are so many things that obviously as an individual I can do as a business with my brother and the green man we can do to bounce back and to get on our feet and a lot of that does come down to planning having an incredible team working with a team that we trust having people that we can fall back on for advice whether it's people from accounting whether it's tax advice whether it's building advice I'm lucky that my brother um, Ben and my dad are builders so if we can kind of use that so again but using using those strengths to kind of benefit you and again just asking questions we we're quiet in the week so we look at what we do for the menu we change our menu for it to be seasonal and adaptable and vegan food is is huge at the moment so we offer vegan things which actually a couple of years ago that's not really something that probably crossed my mind so much make sure there is things for the children to do making sure the outside area is good communicating with customers knowing where you are based for us we're in the middle of a tiny little village very little footfall so there'd be absolutely no point doing an offer for anyone walking past to pick up a a sandwich and blah blah blah, and just having a placard outside because people aren't going to see that but if we wanted to do that we could go online use technology to go right okay drive past pick up a pie take it away or pick up a sausage roll drop in for this so use use your strengths and know your environment if you have a pub or a cafe that's on the side of a really busy market town then get things outside get music playing and 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 things like that we're never going to be able to throw a a rave or a dance or anything like that at the pub because I think the locals would go absolutely mental but somewhere with a busy town with a lower age sort of customer base then that might work brilliantly but also try things if they don't work it's not the end of the world mistakes happen and you learn from them and I think that's so important but we do have to adapt we're going to have to keep adapting we literally take every day every week as it comes if something doesn't work we go right draw a line under it and we move on because otherwise that's where the danger is you start was it the saying don't flog a dead horse if it's done and it's not working don't be ashamed to go do you know what hands up that didn't work let's try something different because I think sometimes the pressures of it's got to be perfect, it's got to be, it's got to work. This is normal. Let's do that. I think the last show, few years have shown us that actually, no, we're rewriting the rule book a little bit. And I think it's being brave and understanding and trying to trying to come to terms with the fact things do change, things are different. And you know what? That's okay. But just have a great team that you can trust. Embrace technology, no matter how daunting it might be ask someone about it because it is so so beneficial in more ways than one legally but also for business would you mind um, saying a few words about for any listeners that feel they might have ADHD and they're not sure uh, what kind of advice would you give them kind of signs and what to do next yeah I think I mean I'm definitely not a uh, a medical expert or anything like that and I can kind of go I kind of only go on what sort of I know for myself I think if if anyone kind of maybe thinks or is is showing maybe sort of signs or is is just wondering sort of about themselves, then maybe speak to somebody. I know sort of NHS and people are quite overrun at the moment. And it's very, it's very, very difficult. So I think patience and talking to people and actually probably people talking to people who are close to you as well and just explain look, I I am maybe struggling with a few things just be patient with me while I look into this a little bit more maybe obviously seek out an expert or find out someone that has been kind of 
recommended but also again if you're in school or people you have children or nieces nephews anything like that they're in school and you think uh, speak to the school about it schools that just do incredible jobs a hard hard tough job it breaks my heart that good teachers are leaving uh, the profession, but speak to them because they do care and they're the fountain of knowledge and they will po- point you in the right direction. But I think the key is communication. And if time is a problem and there's waiting lists and things like that for the NHS, which unfortunately there is, and they are doing such incredible, but such a tough job, then just communicating with people, do your research, ask questions and just patience as well. And just learn, learn to know what works for you. We are all individual, whether it's ADHD, ADD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, anything like that. You have physical impairments, anything. We, we're all individual and that is incredible. And that's what makes us us. And we learn to do things our way. And I think that is enough. And I think that's such a powerful thing to be able to do things our very own way. But yeah, just communication is so key. Communication, learning and research. Never stop learning in any way, shape or form. Well, I have nothing I could possibly add to that. It's very well said. <laughs> so I used to be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems like a great place to wrap up. So thank you for coming on the podcast, Candice. It's been great. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really enjoyed that. You can find out more about Candice by searching at Candice Brown on Instagram. You can also visit smallbusiness.co.uk to learn about making tax digital. Remember to like us on Facebook at Small Business Experts, on Twitter at Small Business UK, all lowercase, and subscribe to our YouTube channel linked in the description. Until next time, thank you for listening. <laughs>